This is a historic event. We're doing it right here on the ground, here in the middle of uh, the New Mexico desert. Well, what is important there is it is an experiment. Phase one, software integration back in the system of system integration lab. We have phase two where we brought the software with the hardware and integrated the two systems together in a field environment. And now we move on to phase three to say, now that you can do this, how would you fight? Yeah, in that. So you got all kinds of acronyms. Uh, you got the SUG-V, that's the uh, small unmanned ground vehicle, really a squad robot. Uh, you have the urban unattended ground sensor or the UUGS. You have the uh, TUGS, tactical unattended ground sensor. And also the IMS or IMS, intelligent munition system. Uh, UAV stands for uh, unmanned aerial vehicle, so the class one unmanned aerial vehicle. On the network side, SOSCO is the system of systems common operating environment. It's our middleware. It's really the glue that holds the system together. And the jitters or joint tactical radio system, what well, passes voice, imagery, and data around the battlefield. And that information is displayed on the COP uh, or the common operating picture, and that's really the picture of the battlefield friendly and enemy and, and it's also the network that ties all the FCS systems together and gives them meaning. We are really within the program the first people to have put together this hardware and software. And the experiment is the first chance to really employ those systems somewhere outside the lab. What's historic here is that we have brought soldiers into the development phase who are taking the F in the future combat system and making that reality. We've taken FCS systems and we're taking soldiers and we're putting them together in a live training environment. With rain and snow and you're bouncing over terrain. Well, the soldiers got classroom instruction on the FCS systems, uh, then ran through a series of tactical exercises uh, over a couple of weeks, learning and developing new tactics, techniques, and procedures, TTPs, and really figuring out how they would use these systems in the real world. We now put designers, software engineers, working directly with the soldiers. The ability to get soldier feedback early in the process and then incorporate that into the design, that's tremendously valuable. The engineer was furiously taking notes and realizing, yeah, I know what I'm doing here when I design this piece. Now I've got some guy who's actually going to be using it. And they say they're coming up with a better system next year that will have incorporated most of those things that uh, I spoke to them about. And all this great interaction culminated in a single capstone tactical exercise with the FCS company team clearing an enemy-held village. FCS systems increased our efficiency by a very large margin, mitigated risks that we would normally take, risks to the flank maybe, risks to the backfield, risks to our six. We used sensors, layering sensors. We were able to destroy the enemy before we even LD'd from the objective with network fires at his observation point. I was a squad leader for first squad. So my, my job was to secure a foothold in the first two buildings. We pushed the SUG out to Alpha 2. As soon as we went in Alpha 2, we got hit. So r right away we knew there was an enemy in Alpha 2. Alpha team leader Sergeant Woods did his job, threw his flashbang in there. We were able to move in quick, take the enemy down because the SUG-V gave us heads up as to what was inside the building. It helps my guys' confidence because they already know what to expect. My team had a couple main missions. One of the missions was to clear Bravo 1. Uh, the buildings we cleared during this experiment, a squad would clear two rooms and they'd stop. Those UUGs, you can place them and you can drive on and continue, you continue to use uh, the same squad. Red 2, this is Red 6, so go ahead and send your SUGV into building Bravo 2. At first he didn't discover any enemy personnel, but he saw some kind of wire going across an entranceway. He further inspected that and he found there was an IED inside the building. He gave the word to the PL that there's an IED in there. He said, hey, go ahead, bypass it. We knew there weren't any enemy personnel because the SUGV searched around. Possible enemy in IMS field ever? Uh, you got vehicle movement or soldier movement, and they report just straight up to the cop. Soldier 6, this is Red 6. Uh, BTR destroyed in IMS field. 7 Red 5, launch UAV. I didn't flank to the far side of the objective. And the UAV was able to identify a breach, so that's what I'm honing in on and sure. getting my guys to the breach quickly. We also had the UAV keeping eyes on the building, forward of the actual soldiers, uh, letting them know what changes was going on. But then you get a sensor hit in the backfield, right? Hey, uh, Red 2, you have a UUGS detection building Bravo 1. The UUGS has, one of them has a, the picture camera on it. The platoon sergeant can see, okay, you know, we've got a hit here, we've got an intrusion here. You can go back and investigate. If you have the element of surprise still and, and you're quiet enough to get in, it, it would be preferred to not have to kick the door down if there's an entry, to send that sub in to make sure you really know where your target is. Tactical sensors covered possible enemy reinforcement routes along our flanks. 
Uh, we have a sensor hit in T. Uggs Field, northeast of Village. Over. Turned out to be a BTR, so we called in close air support. The uh, Class 1 was able to uh, send that information not just to myself and the, the platoon sergeant. It could send it straight up to the, uh, the Apache when it came in. The Apache already knew what it was looking at. Apache inbound, over. Roger, we hear it, over. Kruger 6, this is Red 6. Uh, we have confirmed hit on BTR northeast of Village. Uh, enemy destroyed, over. Destroyed the enemy at a place where he was least expecting it, okay? At his assailable flank, get in his decision cycle. That's what we do at Future Combat Systems. They will tell us on this first series of technologies what those soldiers can really use on the battlefield today. I tell you, the guys that wear this patch on the right shoulder, the combat patch, uh, they realize it. So now it's a matter of the folks that are uh, fronting the money and putting the, putting the kit together uh, to understand what we understand. I was kind of skeptical about the, the Sug V and the UUGs, whether or not I'd use them, and then, then I became a, a big believer. It's like rear security. It's like an extra man in your, uh, in your squad. All they need to do is get it out there to the soldiers and start training on them. The Sug V right now the, uh, in, the, in the UUGs. If you brought them to theater, some would find good use for them. Absolutely right now. I mean, it would have saved us our lives if it was going. The UAV is definitely an asset I'd, I'd take in the country right now, That's as, as is. The video feed is one, actually one of the greatest things, though, because it, it's as as I stand here and look at you guys, that's what I'm seeing on the camera, which is great. Uh, having a platoon leader at that level be able to control icons and systems like that, it gives us a better opportunity for survival. For safety, for security, um, for, for uh, confidence. I mean, my confidence, I mean, I'm much higher. It's the combination of all the systems together. It makes us much more combat effective, smoother operation, less command and control, focus on the nine guys that went into the build, and that's it. You're going to save lives with these new technologies. Three weeks ago, we don't know. Today, we'd use it.